good morning. I'm back. <laughs> Had a few days there. It took a few days off because we're building trails on the property here. Actually opening up old trails from the logging that was done here in 2014. And so I've been doing a lot of work because we're going to be doing some uh, cutting our firewood here in the fall slash early winter. Uh, firewood for next year, not this winter. We have that done. But um, on the subject of working, uh, I'm seeing a disturbing trend, and I've been told about this by different brethren, of uh, young men thinking it's appropriate to not work. And uh, single guys and whatever else, and they just say, well, there's no point in working because the economy's bad, inflation is high, and uh, the dollar doesn't go as far anymore and whatever else. So, you know, if you add it up, it just doesn't really make any sense to work. And they convince themselves that this is the right thing to do. And to just sit around watching YouTube videos. Um, that's not correct. Okay. Uh, the Bible talks about if any would not work, neither should he eat. It doesn't say if any would not work. Um, neither should eat unless the economy is bad and you know then it doesn't make much sense and then it's okay to not work. A man is supposed to work for a living. And King James Video Ministries came after many years of me working outside of the home. Uh, I was in business for myself for a little while, yes, but I was going to art shows. I was sending my work around to art galleries all over America. I had my work in a gallery in Seattle, Washington, Bethesda, Maryland, um, all through Pennsylvania, different places and things we were trying and we're getting into more art galleries and things as time went by. But before that, uh, I built boats. I was a cabinet maker working for other people. I worked at multiple restaurants and um, my first job that I ever had was at the Strasburg Railroad dining car. The little uh, restaurant that they had there, it's, uh, they completely changed it now. We were down there years ago, 2018, and uh, it's completely different inside. And so kind of an interesting thing there, but I remember um, I wanted to get money. And so I wanted to work. My other friends were getting jobs and things. And so I was 14 years old, you know, and I'd wanted to start saving up my money so I could buy my own vehicle when I was 16. And so I had my parents drive me over and I was nervous and I thought, well, whatever, that's just the way it is. And I walked in and uh, walked up to somebody behind the counter there and I said, I'm just wondering if you're hiring. And they said, well, hold on a second. And they went back in and they, the manager came out Joyce Schmidt, or Homan, I guess maybe at the time, I don't know, she had remarried. But she came out and, and uh, she said, yeah, you know, we're, we're always looking for, you know, teenagers to come here and work in the summer months and things. And it's a tourist attraction, so it's open in the summer months. And uh, let me get you an application. So I filled out the application and, um, and she saw my name and she's oh Denlinger. She said, Oh, are you any relation to Don Denlinger? I said, Yeah, he's my uncle. Oh really? Okay, you know, and, and things. And so uh she said, We'll give you a call, we'll let you know. And uh, I got a call a day or so later, and yeah, you start on such and such date. Come on in, we'll give have a uniform for you and all the other things. And I went in and you know what I made? Four dollars and twenty-five cents. That's what I made. <laughs> um and I would have been that would have been in 1989, I think it was. 1989, starting at $4.25 an hour, and I was happy for it. And you say, wow, boy, you could sure buy a lot more back then. Well, not really, because over, over the next few years, I had saved up enough money, and I bought my first car. Well, I bought my very first car was a Volkswagen Beetle that I paid $75 for, but it was in pretty rough shape. Sold it for $250. And... Um, Today, it probably wouldn't be worth a whole lot more than that. It was in pretty bad shape. Drove it around the woods, learned how to drive manual transmission driving it around in the woods. But um, my first car was a Plymouth Champ. And uh, those are very rare now, I understand, which is kind of funny, but uh, manual transmission had a dual range transmission of power and economy. 
uh, you had this extra little shifter that you could do. It's kind of funny. But um, I paid, I think, $795 for it. And uh, I said, wow, you know, cars were so cheap back then. Well, actually, yeah, they were cheaper than today, but that car was pretty bad. And um, that thing left me sit so many times. It had all kinds of issues. The uh, went to shift the one time taking a friend of mine home, and I went to shift and went from first into second gear, crossing an intersection, and the U-bolt or whatever holding up the shifter, you know, uh, can't think of the word right now. Um, it the U-bolt was so rusted it fell out, and the whole shifter started to go down through the floor, and so I had to hold it up the rest of the way I was driving, <laughs> and uh, had a lot of adventures with that vehicle. And of course, you know, I beat the poor thing half to death. I mean, I was field hopping. You know, you go, there's a road like this and you, there's a field in between. You just go through the field, jump up over the bank and go through the field, plowed or not, whatever. And, um, but I had good times, but I wasn't rich. Okay. Uh, my paycheck was very little and I drove an old clunker around and it never was in my mind, this isn't, worthwhile and I shouldn't be here and, and this doesn't really make any economic sense and whatever I had a job and I was very happy to have a job and I went there and I worked hard and that's the point you see having a job as a young man it's not about making lots of money and being able to I got this really good job and I can I can uh, afford a home of my own and everything's just wonderful that's not what it's about it's about developing the character and the skill to get your lazy butt out of bed and go to a job someplace and put in a good day's work. That's what it's about. Oh, but Brother Brian, they have social media stuff now. They check in your social media profile and whatever else and things. Um, yeah, I understand that, but that still doesn't give you an excuse. Um, you should still have a job someplace. And, um, you know, the Lord talks about being a faithful steward and that um, if, if you're not faithful in little things, then how should, or why would the Lord give you the, the true riches, basically? I'm paraphrasing here. Um, but there's a concept there that you're supposed to have a good work ethic, good character. And, um, and if you don't have that, well, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Um, so, head back the other way now, I guess. Luther! I don't know where he's off to. But, um, and let me just say this, too, about the whole inflation thing. Because um, people say, well, you know, I mean, I, I understand economics very well. I've studied it now for many years. And uh, 1971, they took uh, the dollar off the gold standard. So the dollar started to crash after that point. In other words, a dollar is supposed to, you're only supposed to have as many dollars as you have gold to back it up. Well, they, they uh, destroyed that whole thing years ago. And now the dollar has been so devalued and, and uh, just not worth a whole lot. And so, you know, your, your dollar buys less. Sure, I get it. Um, but, you know, you get a higher minimum wage, too. You're not making $4.25 if you go get a job. But let me make a point here. Um, my parents, my father used to tell me the stories of when they first got married and how that uh, they lived in some little apartment. Um, I think it was in the town of Strasburg down in Pennsylvania. And it uh, wasn't a very nice apartment. And they only had one vehicle. For many years, they only had one vehicle. Um, even into my childhood, they only had one vehicle. And then when they had two vehicles, it was a good vehicle the family car, and then the beater car that my father drove to work. My father rode a motorcycle, Honda CB350, uh, back and forth to work. If the roads weren't covered in snow, he was riding. Rain, nice sunny days, whatever else. He actually wrecked his motorcycle the one time in the rain, went, into a, uh, went to go through a green light, and the green lights are dangerous because you have the people sitting there at the light when it's red, and they're dripping antifreeze and oil and whatever else in the center of the road. That's why you don't ever want to be at the center of the road at an intersection. Always stay where the tire tracks are if you're a motorcyclist. Little tip there. Um, 
but you know he went to go and hit the, the turn and he got into some of that slippery stuff with the rain on the roads and he went down and boom and slid along and things and uh, from then on he was on disability or something or whatever else uh, no he got back up and a uh, helmet was all scraped on the side his coat was ripped and <clears throat> got on the motorcycle went to work and uh, was in pain for a while had black and blue and whatever went to work why because he had a wife and children and uh, it's not good for a man to be alone because a lot of these single guys and I was a single guy till I was 36 if you don't know so I understand what it's like to fall into sin because I was in great sin for many years and uh, for a lot of these younger guys they just say well I'm not married and I don't have children to take about take care of and a wife to think about and whatever else and so I can just you know be at home and I'll play my video games and I'll watch videos online and whatever else um, it's not right because you're not learning character but my father and my mother they struggled for years many years and uh, they finally had enough to get a mortgage to have a house built and um wasn't a very fancy house, but I was thankful for it. We had about just under seven acres of land, which in Pennsylvania is a lot. Up here, that isn't much at all. Uh, people up here have many hundreds of acres. A lot of people I've met and uh, had dealings with and things and buying a vehicle from them or whatever else. Um, but down there in Pennsylvania, it was a, that was a pretty good setup that we had growing up, and I was very thankful for it. And, um, but even going back beyond my parents, to my grandparents, um, the stories of my grandparents when they first got married back in the 19, you know, uh, 30s, and um, the struggles that they had, and the hard times, and the, the money problems, and whatever else, in the 1930s, okay, and I don't mean Great Depression era, they, they, uh, certainly went through that and everything, but my grandfather, um, on the Denlinger side, he was born in 1910. So he was a young working man when the, the whole stock market thing crashed. Been, well, been 19 years old, I guess, 1929. And, uh, but you know, they all struggled. They all had hard times. They all went through difficult times. And to try to get away from that as a young man is folly. It's it's not just folly, it's laziness. And, you know, there are things that you can do to save money. Again, well, I have to drive a truck or something. You don't need to drive a truck. You don't need to have the very best of everything. Get, you know, used clothing and just so many different things. Ways to save money, and you know. But uh, if you're not going to work for a living, if you're not willing to go out there and work hard, um, God's not going to bless you with things later on in life. And I, you know, and I say this too, I've seen people come to this country from other, you know, countries. I knew um, a man from Honduras, actually, when I went on a mission trip down to Honduras many years ago, it was down to his hometown that he grew up in. And, um, and this guy, he came to America, went through the process to become a citizen the process of naturalization or whatever you call it. And uh, the guy worked hard. I mean, that guy was just working all the time. And uh, he was a go-getter. You know, he would go and he would, I mean, he had this uh, Ford Astro van, I remember, and, you know, uh, found out about a, a sofa that one of us wanted to get rid of. And he said, hey, we could use a sofa, you know? And uh, we said, all right, you know, you want to come and get it? I'll help you load it in. And I helped him load it into his van and, and uh, all right, well, you know, I have to, I just got off work. I have to get home. You know, my wife is, you know, having to wait to make the supper for me and everything, or I'll have to warm it up when I get there. And, you know, and then I, I need to leave in a little bit to go to the night shift and, and whatever. And, and he was also a pastor, you know, <laughs> and just worked, worked hard. And then I see American men and they're slothful and lazy and, and whatever. And, it's just, it's terrible. And, um, you know, and I've, I've uh, 
heard people and they'll, what they'll do is another one that they'll justify themselves with this whole thing of not working. They'll go to the book of Ecclesiastes and they'll talk about Solomon, King Solomon, how he had everything, you know, and, and it's just, uh, and it was all just vanity and vexation of spirit. And that's the reality. That's just the reality of, of uh, what it's like to be a working man. You know, you just work all your life and it's just vanity. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Um, King Solomon, the reason he is, exists in the Bible, the reason the Lord wrote so much about him and had him write some things, King Solomon is an example of a spoiled brat that was given everything and he's turned out rotten. The Lord oftentimes will put really bad examples into the Bible to show you if you were spoiled rotten, this is how you would turn out. And that's what King Solomon was. King Solomon was not, you know, he's, I builded me houses, I builded this, I builded that. No, he didn't. He had people build it for him. When he says, I builded these things, he's talking about with my money and my wealth and whatever, I paid people to build this. He was a, a lazy, spoiled, rotten brat, a pervert. No man needs a thousand women. Okay, give me a break. What was it, 700 wives and 300 concubines or something like this? No man needs that much. Um, you're a, a filthy pervert if you do that. But little spoiled, rotten brat Solomon, um, I want wisdom from God. God gave it to him and he turned around and, and uh, bit the hand that fed him, so to speak. That's why the Bible warns about um, casting your pearls before swine, lest they turn again and rend you. And um, so, you know, I've gotten to the point in the ministry where I've given so much advice and I've done so much, try to live by example and whatever, and I've realized there are some people that just won't listen. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter how I try to help people or whatever else. Some people, they're just, it's, their mind's made up. And some people, They've been turned over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Um, again, I knew a guy who went to a Baptist church years ago. And this guy, uh, he was slightly autistic. And, um, and I remember uh, he was married and he had children and things, but it you know, wasn't all together up there. But that guy, uh, he had a, when he came to the area, he was working at McDonald's and couldn't afford anything. I mean, he just working as hard as he could at McDonald's, ended up saving up enough money that he could, uh, he was staying with some people, I guess, or something, and saved up enough money to buy a bicycle so he could get back and forth to work a little bit better. Saved up a little bit more money and uh, I guess started looking for a different job and whatever, and he worked and worked hard and he got into this job and he got into that job and finally was able to get an apartment. He met a girl and they got married and, and they were struggling and having a hard time and he kept working hard. And you know what? God honored that. And God will honor you if you work hard. Uh, the Lord has given me a lot to be very thankful for. Uh, this land here, it's just beyond my wildest dreams to have this property here. It's a big piece of land. And... Um, and I'm very blessed with it. Have an office in town that's paid for. All my vehicles are paid for. Uh, we don't have any kind of debt. And I've been able to save up some money and things and, and uh, looking for the Lord's direction and leading in the future. Why? Because I work hard. I work really hard. I work harder now than I ever have before in my life. Um, you know, my days off consist of working here. You know, uh, the thought of vacations or whatever and just going someplace and sitting around and doing not doing anything, well, that doesn't really seem like a good thing to me, I don't know, but uh, work hard, <laughs> work hard. Oh, but Brother Brian, you don't understand. Oh, I understand a lot better than you realize. A lot of you people out there, you think you're so smart. You know, young people especially really ticked me off. This young generation of the Antichrist, Alpha Gen, Gen Z, Millennials, you know, oh, they know so much. Oh, they're so much better, you know, more informed than the, those of us that are older. Uh, I don't think so. And if you're older, by the way, put it in the comments. Put some of your stories down there. I like to read those stories of the struggles that you went through. Um, you know, whatever you are, if you're the wife or the husband or the husband and wife situation or whatever, and the hard times you've been through, let these younger people see. It's not just kooky Denlinger, you know, coming up with all these legalistic standards or some kind of nonsense. Um, 
Everybody throughout history, I don't care how strong the dollar has been, how strong the economy's been, everybody that ever amounted to anything had to struggle. All right, it's just that simple. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. You will suffer as a Christian. You will have struggles in life. And if you are so deceived and so stupid that you think that you have a right to somehow just have everything provided for you and you should be able to live the same standard that your parents had before you and your grandparents before them or whatever, and you should just be able to have everything that they worked their whole life to achieve, you should just get it right away, you're foolish. You're very foolish. Um, there's a, you know, even when I'm coming out here, okay, right here behind me, this trail, there was no trail here when I bought this property. Okay, I made this trail. And actually I made it in the winter. I, a lot of the trail, this whole area right in here by that apple tree over there, this whole area was just filled with aspen trees, little small aspen trees, two to three inches in diameter. I felled hundreds of trees back in through here, hauled them off and cut them up and whatever else. My back was really sore doing that trail right there. Um, the trails that we have over here that I'm building. Um, it's very hard work, but you know what? You get done and you walk on the trail and you say, well, that was worth it. It's not about, you know, how much money did you make? How much money did you spend? Does this make it any economic sense? Uh, I don't care about that stuff. I have a job to do. I have work to do and I'm going to do it. <clears throat> so um, I realize, like, again, like I said, again, a lot of you, I'm not going to get through to you. You're, you're just gone, whatever. You watch it and you're going to write a little comment. Well, what about this? What about that? Whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, but some of you young guys out there that could be falling for some of this laziness that's being put out there. And, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. I just want to sit around and, you know, and, you know, and it's, it's sad too, because you get young women that write me and they say, I was interested in this guy, but the guy doesn't work. He can't hold down a steady job. What future do I have with a guy like that? You don't have a future with a guy like that. Get away from them. You know, well, there are no good women left. Uh, that's a very poor excuse, okay? Uh, it's not the women that bring down a society. It's the men, okay? So, whatever. Um, I'll quit here. Had some things to do this morning, some work, you know, before breakfast and out here on the property. And, uh, you know, looking forward to doing some things here and I'm not even going to get into it online. It doesn't matter, but uh, big plans for a lot more work in the future, a lot more physical labor because I like physical labor. Even though I have a bad lower back and even though I have lots of other pains and aches and scars and things on my body from years of work, I still enjoy physical hard work and I could not imagine living without working hard. So um, if you're a young man out there, do not be um, deceived by these wicked, uh, lazy people, lazy young men and lazy men that uh, don't want to work. You will regret it. Trust me. Uh, I went through it for a number of years. I went through the whole thing of, well, I'm just studying the Bible and, and whatever and, you know, playing video games and the whole thing. I look back at that now and I, I regret it very much. Um, you know, there's a preacher, uh, James Melton, I think his name is, and he talked about how he went to Walmart University. <laughs> you know, uh, when he first got saved, he would listen to Peter Ruckman uh, cassette tapes way back in the day when we had cassette tapes. And he would have a little, you know, Walkman or whatever, and he'd have it on and he'd be listening to preaching while he's sweeping the floors. He was a janitor at Walmart. Oh, wow, what a thrilling job. He was, it was a job. He worked. So instead of playing your little video games and things, um, get some get some audio type of stuff and get a job someplace where you can listen to audio. The Lord will provide. Again, don't push the Lord out of this whole equation. The Lord will provide you with the work that you need to do. And if you show the Him, if you show the Lord, I'm making an effort. God will honor that. Oh, I wish I could get a wife and whatever else and things. Yeah, you know. Again, I went through all that stuff. So you won't deceive me into thinking, oh, but brother, you don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. So just wanted to put that little video out here just as a rebuke to the young men that are being led astray by other young men that uh, profess to be saved and they don't want to work for a living. Um, and by the way, 
there's a real chance that I'm going to be going back to secular work in the future. Um, I've always said I'll do this ministry as long as I financially can. And when the time comes that the, the support's not there, uh, it's not some kind of pouting thing. Well, fine, I'll just leave. No, that, that's not it. It's just science. It's <laughs> If I can't provide for my wife and, and son doing what I'm currently doing, then I'm going to go do something else. So I'm not afraid of going back to the secular world again to work. Um, well, you'll see when you get there, it's going to be different and changed. Mm, whatever. Um, I've been in the factories with the profane, wicked, cussing uh, guys and whatever. Just tell you a little story. When I was building boats many years ago, uh, one of the bosses had a friend that literally brought his girlfriend, some floozy that he was uh, uh, with, you know, going out bar hopping with, and actually came and was fornicating on the boat, one of the boats that we were building the next day, and he came and he was laughing about, you didn't see any stains on the carpet or whatever else and things. That's the kind of stuff I've been through, okay? I've been, I've been there, I've heard all the profane talk, all the wicked stuff, So, it's, and I didn't go running off and, oh, it's so offensive to me and I can't work at a place like that. I worked there, okay, it was my job. And I did a, a lot of hard work and I got raises and, and whatever else. So um, there's no excuse to not work. If any would not work, neither should he eat. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching. Take heed to my words, young men. Get out there and get a job.